The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to TrackVIA's Turning Ideas into Apps, our low-code TrackVIA demo with presenter Brandon Gill. My name is Michelle Martz Mayfield and I'm the PR and Corporate Communications Manager for TrackVIA. And we're going to start today with a little bit of housekeeping, um, just so that you guys know what you're doing. Um, please make sure that you keep your microphones in the listen-only mode, that way everyone can hear the webinar. If you have questions, please submit them via the chat window. We will follow up with those at the end of the webinar, and if we don't get to them and answer them live, we will follow up with an email. This webinar will be recorded and we will send you a follow up email within 48 hours with that recording. All right, now that that's done, we'll kick it off to you, Brandon, and have, enjoy the webinar. Awesome. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, so hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Uh, my name is Brandon Gill. I'm a senior solutions consultant here at TrackVIA. Um, and what we're going to be going through today, if you haven't attended one of these webinars in the past, is it's really just a nice intro into uh, who is TrackVIA, what is low code, we are a low code software solution, so really what is low code, how is it utilized, who can use it, and then uh, the majority of our time today is going to be spent going through a demonstration of a low code application, one of the common use cases that we often hear at TrackVIA. Um, and giving you a little insight into what an application could look like in a low-code environment. I want to start by just giving you a little bit of info about TrackVIA and who we are. Uh, we were founded in 2006. We are headquartered uh, in Denver, Colorado. Um, got about 75 employees and over 350 customers. And I am showcasing a few of these customers here on the right side of the screen. Um, you got the North Face, KSI is in oil and gas, Stearns is a uh, mortgage loan company, obviously Honeywell is in a lot of different things, Las Vegas Sands and Casinos, and Deep Roots Harvest is one of our largest cannabis customers. Cannabis is a vertical that we focus on here uh, at TrackVIA. And I showcase these customers, uh, not just to say that we have them as customers, but also to note the differences of the industries that they are in and the differences of the use cases that they are solving with TrackVIA. So we've got some manufacturers like the North Face and Honeywell. We've got field services in KSI, financial services in Stearns and Sands, and obviously cannabis in Deep Roots Harvest, where cannabis really uh, has the opportunity to run their entire operations on TrackVIA. So as we go through the demonstration today, that's really what the theme of low code is. It's for everybody, it's by everybody. Here at TrackVIA, we do focus in the manufacturing, financial services, and cannabis space. But we've got customers ranging in a lot of different industries solving a lot of different use cases. So even if the demo today might not speak to a use case that you're immediately thinking of, uh, you know, really anything that we need to track can be done in a low code environment. And that's what these customers here are doing. So what is low code? Uh, it's a relatively new term and actually TrackVIA being founded in 2006, we're one of the pioneers in this space. We're one of the first companies to really get into low code and it's a booming market right now. A lot of companies are coming out with their own flavors of low code and it is a very broad definition of what can be defined as low code. But the standard definition, if you were to just Google what is low code software, this is about what you're going to get. It's software that provides a development environment used to create applications through graphical user interfaces and configuration instead of traditional hand coded computer programming. What that really boils down to is low code is a way for you as a business user or you as a non programmer to build robust workflow applications without having to code. Uh, I always say it's for people that, that think of themselves as technical, but not necessarily programmers. And I certainly fall into that category myself. Uh, my college degree is in mining engineering. I've always had kind of a technical background, a lot of work in Excel, a lot of work in programs like that, but I've never actually learned how to write hard code and actually build applications from scratch. So we're able to instead uh, build things in a graphical user interface that makes it very easy for business users. And we'll get to see that as we go through the demonstration. There's also a large span of what low code is in the marketplace, and I try to outline that here um, with this graphic. You know, if you look at the analyst reports, the Gartners, the Foresters, things like that, they'll define low code on a very broad spectrum, and they're starting to narrow in on that a little bit just as the industry matures. Um, but right now, it's a very broad spectrum. 
And what low code can encompass is certainly your lightweight tools like Excel and access databases. You know, I think we all know you can build some very robust things in Excel without ever having to actually write code. Um, but those are lighter weight tools. They can be a little hard to manage, certainly hard to scale. Um, and a lot of our customers are coming to us saying, you know, we're growing like crazy. Uh, our operations are changing and we just can't quite scale with Excel. So we need something a little more robust. On the other side of low code, you have what's called developer toolkits. These are companies like OutSystems and Appian, still technically considered low code, but you do need to know how to program in order to make these systems really work for you. They encompass an interface that allows it to allows a user to uh, kind of a box to play with that's a little bit easier than starting from scratch, but you still do have to know how to code. For TrackVIA, I think of us really in between these two as what I would call a true low code solution. Without writing any code, you can build very robust workflow applications. We do have the ability for a little bit of code for some more advanced capabilities, but most of our customers are able to accomplish all of their workflow needs and all of their business needs without ever actually writing code. So it's got a little bit of the best of both worlds there uh, without actually needing to involve your IT staff if you don't want to necessarily. So who is low code for? Given that definition, the simple answer is low code is for everyone. Here at TrackVIA, we have many, many business users who are the primary admins, the primary owners of their organizations, and they utilize low code to build out workflows, to build out business processes, because they don't they either don't wanna bother IT, they don't wanna wait on IT, or they just might not have a large IT staff. So really the business users are also IT, and it's an easy interface for them to learn and build off of. Additionally, IT professionals can certainly utilize low code as a great toolkit to build out business needs for the organization quickly and easily. It's just another tool in their tool belt. Um, I was actually talking to a, prospect, a prospective customer uh, last week that says, you know, I got 140 IT staff and we've got a large amount of them dedicated just to maintaining our current systems. I want them to move on. I want them to be able to do better things. Low code could certainly be used for that because you're just giving them a tool belt that allows them to build a little bit easier, uh, maybe not have to focus so much on the old antiquated coding systems that they're uh, currently doing. So bottom line is as we go through this today, it certainly can be used by everyone. We see a whole spectrum of people using low code here at TrackVIA. So at this point, I want to jump into the demonstration. And what we're going to be demonstrating today is a production management workflow. So it's a bit of a manufacturing type use case. It might be used for a traditional manufacturer. We've got a lot of manufacturers of like the North Face does jackets. Um, we've got uh, manufacturing that spans into 3D printers. A lot of different manufacturers uh, utilize track via. Uh, cannabis companies also utilize production management as a way to uh, move their raw material to a finished good. So that's kind of the era that you might think of this demonstration today. We're gonna start in the role of a product engineer who's gonna review our products and our routing plans. They're then going to schedule out a new uh, a new job that needs to be done and actually release that onto the floor. Uh, they're able to monitor all that work that's happening and they're able to assign it to an operator who is going to complete these production steps and log any quality failures. So it's a bit of a manufacturing type use case that we're gonna look at today. But again, keep in mind that TrackVIA can be used for many use cases and we'll touch on some of that as we go along. I'm gonna step into my other tab here where you will now see TrackVIA. I want to start by giving you a little orientation to the screen just so we all know what we're looking at. Top left hand corner, we've got our track via logo, but this can, of course, be custom branded to your organization, your logo. So it really looks and feels like it is your product, as can the URL up top. You'll see that I'm currently in an application called production management. Like I said, it's more of a manufacturing type use case. But if I hit this drop down here, you're going to see that I've got a lot of different demonstration applications in here asset tracking, field services, inventory tracking, invoice approval, project tracking. And the reason I show this is not to say that any of these things are modularized. It's just to say that we're able to build a lot of these different use cases using the same tools that we're going to walk through in this manufacturing application. So even if you're looking at this going, well, I don't really do a lot of manufacturing, any information that needs to be tracked and moved around your organization, anything you're currently doing on emails or spreadsheets to move them around is likely a great candidate for a tool like TrackVIA. Below that, you'll see that I'm logged in as an admin. So I have access to this admin toolbar here. We'll do a little bit of building on the back end as we go along. Uh, most users don't have access to this, only admins can see it. 
And then you'll see that I've got three different dashboards in this particular application. You can have as many dashboards as you want. Dashboards are really used to bring information to the light for the user, give them a unique user experience that showcases the work that they need to be completing, um, and also allows people to have a good view of what they need to see or what they're allowed to see. So if there's any information you don't want people to see, we have very robust roles and permissions to limit what they can see there. Each of these dashboards is made up of a series of elements. So you'll see I've got some shortcut buttons here. I've got more of a grid type view here, as well as some analytics down below. And all of these elements are totally customizable. You can make these dashboards look any way that you want to give your users the best user experience and surface this information in a way that's meaningful to your users and your organization. Now, in this case, we're a manufacturing company, and you'll see that I manufacture four different products here. Here's kind of the product summary. And if I click into any of these products, what I can see is a full breakdown of the product as well as work instructions, routing plan details. I can see uh, the percentage of on-time steps for these routing plans. So I can start to identify any bottlenecks or anything like that. I can also see work orders that have been released, work orders that we need to work on and things of that nature. So you can create a full summary view of the products that you're creating. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna step into the work order planning dashboard. On this dashboard, what I'm doing is this is where I would create my work orders, is where I would release them onto the manufacturing floor, and it's where I would start to assign operators out to them. And again, if your manufacturing department does things a little bit differently, TrackView is very flexible on how it can be put together. So as I go through this today and you go, oh, well, we do things a little bit differently, that's totally fine. Um, I'll invite you to use your imagination a little bit as we go through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just start by adding a new work order. When I do that, I'm taken to this custom form that I've set up that's going to ask me to collect some information about this work order. Any of these fields can be changed. Any of these fields can be updated. Uh, they can be um, added to really, again, just to make sure that it's fitting what your company and your organization is looking for. But I'm going to start by just filling in some of this stuff. So maybe a work order number. I'll just put in a random work order number there. Um, who's our customer? So in my case, I actually work with individual customers. In your case, maybe it's a one-off product or a one-off customer. We'll say it's Hyundai. What product are we going to manufacture? Let's say maybe it's a cat back muffler. The work order status will start in planning. We don't want to release it to the floor just yet. And maybe I have a quantity of one in this particular work order. You'll see we've got some date and time fields. So maybe this, this is due a little bit later in the month, and we're going to go ahead and start it right now. We have different field types, which I really like about TrackVIA. It allows you to really sink in on what data you want to collect. So people can't just type in any date and time. They have to actually select a particular date and time, which can be really handy. I think we've all run into issues with that in Excel and things of that nature. I've got a note field here for just any notes I might want to attach. I can also bring in PDFs of work instructions or receipts or things of that nature. Um, so we can hold PDFs, Word docs, PowerPoints, all things of that nature in TrackVIA. It'll stay with the record. And then I'm going to go ahead and assign a work order operator, and I'm going to assign it to myself as Brandon Gill. When I hit save changes on that, it's going to take all that information and it's going to start to put a schedule together about how long this should actually take me. And as we start to fill in this information, as we start to complete this work order, these other fields will start to fill in. I can see that the routing steps were automatically assigned to my operator here, so we can go ahead and start working on this product. If I jump back out to the dashboard here, you're gonna see that the work order we just created is sitting in this planning section of our work order summary. And this is what's called a lanes view within TrackView. We've got some conditional formatting here that's telling me I've got some things that are overdue if they're in red, uh, they're not overdue yet if they're in green. I can also see my schedule down here in what we call a timeline view. You can see here, because this is not yet a released work order, it's showing up in yellow. Again, just some conditional formatting I set up just to have some easy visuals. And you'll notice here that if I look at my current resource load, Brandon Gill only has one thing assigned to him. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually going to drag this from planning over to released. And if I refresh my screen, everything's gonna update in real time at TrackVIA. So because we drug that over to released, you'll now see that I have two products assigned to me. So it's that new catback muffler we just did. And down below, because it's now released on my schedule, it's gone from yellow to green there. So again, very easy visuals so that we can actually see what's released, see what our work capacity is and things of that nature. 
All right, now that things have actually been released, there's a couple of different things that have happened that I wanna showcase to you all. First and foremost, if I drag over my email here, we're gonna see that zero minutes ago, I received this email letting me know that this work order had been released to me as Brandon Gill. So within TrackVIA, you can set up uh, unique, unique messages and unique uh, notifications to let people know what's happening. Again, a little bit better than just slinging emails back and forth. You actually get to control when these email notifications go out. So you can do them on a time basis or you can do them on an action basis. For example, when a work order gets released to a particular operator, uh, this button here is a live button that would allow me to click directly into the record we just created. So uh, we can go directly to the source of anything within TrackVIA from these emails. All right, now that we know that it's something's been assigned to me, I'm gonna shift over to our final dashboard, which is our operator activity. So this is showing me as the operator, my dashboard. So it's a unique view for me. I've got my work schedule down here that's showing up on a calendar view. I can see there's that Hyundai catback muffler that we need to work on. An operator profile shows me the percentage of on-time jobs I have. You'll see that I do pretty well, but we can always look at which operators are performing better, which ones maybe need some training, things of that nature. And I've got some additional ch charts down here based on my performance. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and complete a routing step and start to work through this work order. But we're actually gonna do this today on a mobile device. So one thing that's great about TrackVIA and one thing that really sets us apart from some of our competition in the low code space is we do have a native mobile application. So if I click the home button here on the iPad on my desk, you'll see that I do have a TrackVIA app sitting there that I click into. It's available on both iOS and Android. You log in using the same credentials that you might uh, use if you were to log in on the web and you get full access to everything that you would on the web. So you'll see all the buttons look the same. I've got access to those same charts here that we see down below on the web. So you get full access to everything. If you've got a really uh, big mobile use case, such as manufacturing, this can be great because it eliminates some of the paper. Some of our customers don't have a huge mobile use case, but I always think it's still handy to have the mobile app because maybe you wanna check some charts on the go, update things for mobile. I think we're inherently becoming a more mobile society. Uh, so having things on mobile can always be beneficial. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go ahead and press this workflow to complete a routing step. You'll see the first thing that's brought up is a barcode scanner. So had I put in a serial number here and said, you know, this is the work order number, I could then scan it again to just start that first routing step. Now, in my case, I didn't do that. But again, using the because it's a native mobile app, we can do things like barcode scan, photo capture, location capture, and take advantage of the device's capabilities as well. Instead, I'm just going to click in and manually start this first step for our catback muffler. You'll see it's routing step 10, which is our mill sheet of metal. And I can go down here and I can see that there's some work instructions. I can see a visual of what it should look like. And what I can do is I can just say, what time did I start this? And what time did I finish it? And we'll say maybe it took me a few minutes here. We can do a key dimension check. And in doing a key dimension check, uh, this is actually a required field within TrackVIA. And if I pass it, I can just continue on and go to the next step. However, if I fail it, I'm going to be prompted to take a photo. So again, taking advantage of the device's capabilities here, uh, we'll just go ahead and take a photo. I'll grab a photo of my coffee mug here. We'll say that's the, the part we were working on. And I can append that photo into the record in track via, and then I can also draw on it and call out any areas of concern. This can be great for quality use cases. It can be great for receiving use cases. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of things you can do with that photo capture and annotation capabilities there. Now, we also have the ability to do a sign off. So I'll go ahead and sign off as the operator. What I always tell people about the sign off is I really like the fact that uh, the sign off is there. Um, however, it's not necessarily needed in certain use cases because uh, with the sign off or with TrackVIA, you do get a full audit history as well. So because you don't uh because you have that audit history you can see who's doing what when and where at any given time okay so now that we've gone through that we'll go ahead and hit save on that and that'll take us back out to the dashboard we can go about our work again and let's complete one more routing step just to show you how we move through so you recall in that first one we did routing step 10 now if we click into it you'll see that we're on routing step 20. 
I won't go through that again just because we um, just went through all of that stuff, but you can see how we start to progress through things um, as we go about track via and as we go about this workflow. Now we've got about 10 minutes left and we are getting a couple of questions here. So I do wanna make sh be sure that we're conscious of time. So at this point, I wanna step out of our workflow demonstration that we've been going through and show you a little bit of the behind the scenes of track via and actually do a little bit of building for you. So to do that, I'm going to remove our mobile device here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some editing within the tool. And this really is going to showcase the low code uh, feature of TrackVIA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to a table. Now TrackVIA is a relational database or all these applications are relational databases rather. So they're made up of a series of tables here. And if I go down to my work orders table and I hit edit on that, I'm taken to what's called my work or my table editor. And on the left hand side of my table editor are all of the different uh, fields that I can use. So text fields and number fields I can just type into. Drop downs and check boxes are great because they really limit what information can be filled in and keep our data really clean. We've looked at date and time fields. We've looked at some specialty fields like images and links and things like that. Location fields can be great if you're trying to capture where we received something or what facility someone was working at. And then our calculated fields, really any calculation you could do in Excel, you can also do within TrackVIA. Here in the middle is all of the raw data being captured on this table right now. You might not expose all this data to your end users. You'll see we've got a lot of calculated fields down here um, on this particular table, but in its most raw sense, here's all the data being captured. And if we wanted to add something onto this table, all we would have to do is say, what field type do we want? And I'm gonna take a drop down in this case, pick it up, drag it over and just drop it into place. We can give it a name, let's call it maybe work order priority there. And we can give it some options, high, medium, low, and hit save on that. And that's really all it takes for us to add a new field onto a table. With traditional point solutions and things of that nature, that might take a little bit of advanced coding, some customization, maybe we have to go back to the vendor. In a low code system like TrackVIA, very easy to drag that over and drop it in place. Now, the next thing we'll wanna do is actually place this onto a form so we can start to collect that information. So if I go to my forms here, they're broken up by table. So I'll go down to my work order form and I'll go to my work order create form and edit that. This takes us to our work order overview form. This is the form that we were looking at when we first created that work order. And again, similar to our table editor, left-hand side is the fields we can use. Right-hand side, obviously, is how we want this uh, form to be laid out. So what I might do is just take our work order priority, drop it into place there. You'll see I've got a placeholder here, so I can maybe move it up right there on the placeholder. Uh, I can extend it, make it a little bit bigger if I want. I can even change the colors of this if I want to do so. And on any of these fields, we can make some form rules very easily. So for instance, maybe we want our work order priority to be a required field. So I can select this, make this required on this form, and you'll see a little asterisk appears to make sure that's required. We go ahead and hit save on that. And now, again, everything in track view will update in real time. So if I go back out to our work order planning dashboard here, I can hit add a new work order, and I'll be taken to that form where you can see the colors changed, our work order priority is now an option, and because it's a required field, I actually cannot move forward without making that change there, and I'll just say it's high in this case. Awesome. So we've gone through quite a lot here from a workflow side. We were able to create a work order, release it onto the floor, and actually assign it to an operator where an operator was able to work on the things on a mobile device. And then from an admin side, you saw how easily we were able to add a field to a table, add that field onto a form, so we can now capture a new piece of information within track via. So very scalable with your business, very easy to make these changes, no coding required to do so. We've got about six minutes left here, and we have had a couple of questions come through the chat. Um, a couple of final notes before we get to these questions. Um, as Michelle mentioned in the beginning, an email of this recording will be sent to you all within 48 hours, and I do appreciate you all attending. Um, I do value any feedback. We are doing these things about once a month now, so we're trying to make sure that they're informative and helpful for those that are attending. So a short survey will come up uh, when we wrap up this webinar. So if you can take a couple of minutes to fill that in, I would greatly appreciate it. 
And if you have any questions or you want any more information about TrackVIA, I put my email address up here uh, so I can make sure to get back to you if you have any questions. And any questions we don't get to in the next five minutes, we'll be sure to address um, in a post follow-up email. Now, one of the questions we did get here, it says, I see a lot of functionality, but wish the white space could be reduced. Paper forms don't spread everything out like that. Neither do magazines and books. Modern screens can show some detail as paper. So let's enjoy that resolution instead of looking like a bad SharePoint. That's a fair point there. And one of the things we've been working at within TrackVIA is uh, figuring out a way to really make the space a little bit uh, a little bit better uh, for our end users. So we actually released a new UI, which is what you all saw today. Some of the old UI we had was even more white space. And we're trying to take that feedback from uh, current customers as well as people that uh, may just be uh, learning about TrackVIA for the first time. And I think one of the things that we're really noticing is, um, you know, there's a, there's a hard balance between too much white space and also making sure that the screen doesn't get cluttered there. So, um, but I will definitely pass that feedback on to our product team around how much white space is on uh, some of the fields there. Another question we did get was around the mobile device capabilities. Um, the question was, uh, what uh, operating systems do you operate on? Uh, we currently operate on both iOS and Android. You could go into either of those app stores and you will find, um, you will find, uh, basically a TrackVIA application that you can download. And if you were to become a TrackVIA customer, the login information is the exact same as it would be on the web. So you can log in there and have full access uh, to the mobile device. Another question we had is, uh, it says excellent versatility with the fields. The question is how robust is the data picker? Um, I guess I'm not totally sure what that question is asking as far as how robust the data picker is. Um, however, we do have the ability to uh, have a lot of different information for something like a drop down list. So you can have a lot of different options. You'll see that I only have three in there if the uh, question is referencing something like a drop down list. Um, additionally, you can have um, you know, more uh, automation in the way that you select those things. So what we can do is maybe if we selected this product, the drop down narrows down from 100 down to five. So we can start to narrow things down as we select them in the form. So we can make these forms very robust, make some of the rules uh, very easy to follow. Really the end goal, especially on a mobile device is to make it as easy as possible for your end users to uh, fill in that information in a way that's not super cluttered. So utilizing show hide rules, utilizing uh, narrowing down those uh, drop down lists so that instead of 100 options, maybe based on some earlier selections, you only have five. Uh, again, just making it as easy as possible for your end users. That's going to increase the adoption greatly. Um, and it's just going to increase the user experience greatly. And we find when users actually like using the tool, they'll utilize it more and your data will just be better uh, through and through. I believe that's all the questions that we uh, have gotten at this point. Uh, looks like we're finishing up about two minutes early. Uh, but again, I do want to thank those of you who attended for attending. Um, and if you do have time to fill in that short survey, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, but I want to say thanks again, and I hope you all have a great day.